Right. Uh, okay. So until others join, uh, so let us uh, get started. Uh, so today we are going to discuss uh, the tutorial file. Uh, there are a couple of questions left uh, in the tutorial file. So we are going to start with that and then uh, moving on to the tutorial six. So that's how we have planned the things. And uh, basically we'll be looking at uh, two important areas. So in your syllabus, uh, the one thing is based on uh, the defined uh, benefit plans or we call it the post uh, employment benefit plans that we are going to focus on. And I have taken some exam type questions uh, so if you can manage something of this nature, then uh, you can handle them uh, in exam scenario. Uh, and also we are going to discuss some of the questions based on uh, uh, what you call that the earning per share. So there we are going to discuss uh, a couple of questions. So that's the thing uh, what I have planned for the day. Uh, so, and this is going to be our final tutorial as well. Uh, so as you may find that uh, from the next week onwards, we are going to start your group presentation starting from 27th. So most probably tonight I might upload uh, uh, the schedule, <coughs> schedule for your presentations and uh, it's going to be started uh, from 27th, right? 27th, uh, it's going to be started. So usually uh, we are taking uh, the presentation uh, from Saturdays and Mondays in the shoot usual time slot, what we have, and uh, you can see that uh, in the schedule, uh, which I'll be uploading, right? Okay, so it's about uh, how we proceed in the future. So with that note, let us move on to uh, the question number two. So in the last class, you can remember that uh, the question number one, that was based on the agriculture standard, that is LKS 41, and we managed to discuss that. And then today we are focusing on that is LKS 19, the employee benefits, employee uh, benefits. So in that, I have taken a very important area that is about the, the defined uh, uh, benefit plans. Uh, uh, you know, it is uh, the plans that is other than the defined contribution plans. Uh, so since you are A levels, you are familiar with this defined contribution plans, especially that uh, the EPS, calcu sorry, uh, the calculation of uh, uh, the employee provident fund, EPF and ETF, that is basically uh, in our context, what we consider as the defined contribution plans. And the accounting for them is quite straightforward and uh, you have done uh, those computations since your levels. So therefore I might not concentrate on the defined contribution plans, uh, but uh, the defined benefit plans, right? So the defined benefit plans as per the standard says that it's a plan other than the defined contribution plan. It's a post employment benefit plan that is other than the uh, defined contribution plans. And uh, if you look at this question, you can see that most importantly, the information is given you on two main aspects. What is that? The plan asset and the defined benefit obligation. So therefore, when it comes to a question or when it comes to a scenario on defined benefit plans, if you take this defined benefit plans, Defined benefit plans. So uh, the two uh, the two main uh, aspects what you should focus on it is about the defined benefit obligation, defined benefit obligation, liability, or we can say defined benefit liability and the plan asset. So those are the two main aspects, no? Plan assets, as you would have discussed in the lecture. So these are the two crucial aspects. So usually in the context of this defined benefit plans, uh, what we are going to do, uh, so we are going to uh, build up 
a particular uh, fund. So it is usually an investment. So it's an investment and we may contributing time to time. And that's what we call the plan asset, plan asset. So it is a kind of a fund that we develop for the purpose of uh, helping us uh, to discharge the obligations, this defined benefit obligation uh, to uh, what do you call that, uh, to settle these defined benefit obligations to meet the commitments of the post employment benefits. So we are creating this particular fund. So it's a kind of investment. So time to time, most probably on a periodic basis, we are contributing something for this fund. So therefore, when and where there is a particular settlement comes, you can manage that settlement uh, through this plan asset. So therefore, it's a kind of a, uh, even I would say that it's a kind of a risk mitigation. So uh, this will ensure that, this plan asset will ensure that, so you have enough funds available with the organization to settle this defined benefit, uh, defined benefits. So when and where they become due. So it's about the plan asset. And the defined benefit uh, liability that will represent the obligation. So it is most probably at the present value, the present value of the obligation, it might show uh, that an organization is assuming uh, for a particular employee or maybe set of employees uh, once they uh, retires. So that is what we call the force benefit, ben uh, benefit plans. So therefore, whatever the benefit that you have to uh, pay for a particular employee or set of employees after, the, uh, after their uh, retirement, after their retirement. So whatever the benefit that you may have to pay after retirement, and you are looking at what is the obligation that you have. So usually, if you take this defined benefit uh, liability account, the typical account you would find is like this. You'll be starting this defined benefit liability. Defined benefit liability account, if I take it. So at the beginning of the period, you will be having this defined benefit obligation, the balance brought forward, the balance brought forward, the amount outstanding or the liability, that is your liability at the beginning of the period. Balance brought forward, defined benefit obligation liability at the beginning of the period. So you are having that, so a particular amount, right? Then, you know, on this uh, defined benefit obligation, the retirement benefits and the defined benefit, yes, uh, that's what I'm explaining, good, good question. So when it comes to this retirement benefit, basically there are two types, retirement benefits. Retirement benefits, basically two types, right? One is called the defined contribution plans. Defined contribution plans. And so this is very common when it comes to the public sector organization. Most of the time you would find that uh, the EPF, Employee Pro Provident Fund, and ETF, and ETF is basically comes under this, right? So under these plans, under these arrangements, uh, the employee uh, or even the employer is paying a certain amount, contributing a certain amount. And that is what we call the defined contribution plans. It's a retirement benefit plan. Similarly, in some organization, instead of these defined contribution plans, they have this defined benefit plans, right? Defined benefit plans. Benefit plans. It got a basic retirement benefit kinek varga, so the cutter, the end of the blue. So they cut defined contribution plans. It got a at the end of the particular contribution. If when you come to this EPF, 
uh, you know, the employee and employee contributes, right? Employee and employee contributes. So usually the contribution from the employee and the employer, they contribute. So usually the employer con employee contributes 10%, then the employee contributes 15%, right? And when you come to the ETF, this is the ETF arrangement, employee provident fund. Then when you come to the employee trust, employee trustee fund, ETF. So it's just a contribution that is made by the employer, right? So this is the defined contribution plan and you have extensively discussed even since you are A-levels about the defined contribution plan. That is also a retirement benefit arrangement. But now what we are going to consider, it's about the defined benefit plans. So under that, so you would find it is a kind of a contribution. Uh, it's not a kind of a, a fixed contribution is there. So here the distinguishing feature is that there is a, a fixed commitment on a periodic basis. There is a fixed commitment by the employee and even the employer. But when it comes to the defined benefit plan, you may not find that there's a kind of periodic commitment uh, in the sense that on a periodic basis that the employee is contributing something, but they might have to uh, ensure that. So at the, uh, at the retirement, at the point of retirement or a particular a defined benefit has to be paid. So that is something must be guaranteed, but it's not a kind of a obligation. So here you usually find that it's a kind of a uh, statutory obligation is there, but here uh, you don't have a kind of a obligation to contribute for something. When you come to this plan, I said, you don't have obligation to contribute. So when you obligation, you can contribute plan as it to contribute. So in this case, have adequate funds, we have a liquidity issue, we have to manage the investment, we have to investment, maintain karan, right so kind of investment that you maintain and time to time you contribute money right the fund mudal time to time right and that's how it works this plan as it it's a investment right so the, those are the two uh, kinds of retirement benefit so we are focusing about the defined benefit right so when it comes to the defined benefit plan the two crucial aspect is about the plan asset and the defined benefit obligation. So usually if I take the account of this defined benefit liability, you would find that there is a balance brought forward. That is the obligation at the beginning of the period, you might have to pay some benefit at the retirement of the employee. So therefore, what is the obligation at this particular date? Say for an example, it is 1st of April, 2020. So what is the obligation? Then on this amount, you are going to compute an interest expense, interest expense. So if you can remember, I told you that when you cover this defined benefit uh, obligation, you are going to show them at the present value. So in the sense, you are discounting the future cash flows and getting the present value. So therefore, there must be a kind of a unwinding. So therefore, this interest expense, how you calculate by taking the discounting rate that is the discounting rate the rate that you should use for the discounting rate you are going to apply that to this outstanding amount at the beginning of the period and then you calculate some interest expense over there right and thereafter uh, time to time on a periodic basis you might recognize some expense to the pnl and that is called the Current service cost. Current service cost. Current service cost. Take video. Dala. Api periodically uh, expense. Ekap recognize karan doorne PNL nille. Toh me ekap api periodically expense. Ekap kando na ganwa me api kuchhara commitment. Ekap api na the periodically api commitment. Ekam mukhaagda kine. Current service cost. Right. Toh me ekita ma basically thi nille. Post service cost. 
right එම question එකේ මේක නැති වෙන්න පුළුවන් the post service cost කියන එක ඇති වෙන්නේ how this post service cost come into play uh, it is uh, in the instances where when you are going to implement a change to a particular post uh, employment defined benefit plan if you are going to make a particular change for this plan then in that instance considering the previous periods where these employees are eligible for the benefit then there would be a certain cost and that's what we call the post service cost so let me take an example and let me show that to you right and thereafter here you can see that if you take the kind of uh, uh, one additional thing you can witness that uh, time to time you might have to pay uh, the benefit when the employee retires you might have to pay this benefit and the benefits what you pay and you are going to take it here so when you pay the benefit the double entry how it goes it gets credit to the plan asset and it gets debit to the defined benefit liability dara bata mama kiwa me plan asset ekak api hadanne ai ekak api hadanne api ara retirement benefit gewana kota eka bohoma smooth vidiyata siddha karan so yam kisi bilawaka employee kene retire wena kota yara gewanna thiyende api e plan asset ekin ain karala eka thamai denne me kene employed isa kota if there is a retirement payment so you would credit it here defined benefit liability and you would put that to here that is the plan asset it comes from plan asset so make it sarlawa gattot api mulinma fund ekin draw karanawa etawata api cash debit wenawa plan ekak credit wenawa ඊට පස්සේ අපි මුදල් ගෙවන කොට cash credit වෙනවා fund එක debit වෙන. ඒතර මේ entry එක combine කරලා ගත්තාම අවසානිතුරු වෙන්නේ plan asset එක credit වෙලා defined benefit liability එක debit වෙන එක. right? ඒතර ඒක තමයි මෙතන ගත්තේ මේ benefits ගෙවන අවස්ථාවක right? when you pay the benefits. right? when you pay benefits. ियल and actually and you need to get this defined benefit liability remeasured me point ekey diputa api mokakda karanna one me defined benefit liability ekak remeasure karaganna one actually keneki service ekak aragena right etawata professional was right no e service ekak laba dena etawata e professional kenekge service ekak aragena api metana remeasurement ekak karana right එතකොට අපි ඒ remeasure amount එක සමහර විට අපිට මේ account එක balance කරනකොට මෙතෙන්ට එන figure එකට වඩා වෙනස් වෙන්න පුළුවන්. එතනදී ඒක remeasurement gain එකක් වෙන්නත් පුළුවන්, loss එකක් වෙන්නත් පුළුවන්. That must be charged to the OCI. So therefore, apart from this, uh, you would likely to see there can be remeasurement gains or losses. There there can be remeasurement gains or loss so depending on uh, which side is the greatest there can be remeasurement gain or loss so let me assume a remeasurement loss scenario so the remeasurement remeasurement loss ekak thibuna kiyala hitu so the defined benefit credit kara debit karana oci so to make yan done oci ekata so remeasurement loss This should go to the OCI. Then we call OCI. I get the money. Yeah, no. Right. So the main thing is basically defined benefit liability. Take the end only. Only me at the beginning of the period you have this defined benefit liability outstanding amount that is at the present value. So you may be paying them at the point of retirement. Say that there is a 
five years or ten years time for a particular employee to retire. So to keep it simple, let's assume a scenario of a particular employee. Then you may have to pay this benefit after ten years time. In ten years time, so therefore you need to look at what must be the benefit at that point in time. And once you, uh, yeah. So you need to get what is the present value of the benefit, right? That is accrued so far. May that why I got which benefit take a present value the key the key level la I got my meter the. Then on this, you need to apply the unwinding, apply the interest expense at the discounting rate. You get the interest expense, and then you have the current service cost, and that is the benefit, uh, the periodic benefit that is attributable to a particular employee. So the amount of employee connector, the other kind of salary, the amount of service that pay him to do, the entitled one benefit that the amount of the amount of current service cost that he has, right? That's what we call the current service cost. Uh, that is also taken at the present value. We will see that through an example. Then the post-service cost, kila mangkiwa samahala vasta alki ena puluang. That can only come into play the in the instances where you are going to make a change to this defined benefit plan. So the other thing is that apni hita mu there is a particular defined benefit plan. Uh, you initially think of uh, giving the employees uh, a benefit of one percent. Uh, from uh, uh, their final salary, let's say that uh, you are going to pay one percent of their final salary, uh, considering the period of their service, right? Then, in one point in time, you are going to decide that no, uh, we are going to pay, say, one point five percent from the final salary, considering the period of their service. So it's a change to the defined benefit plan. तर बोलिए मैं दाला ही था ना वह employees रहते हैं अभी introduce करने में defined benefit plan ने के अभी दिन ने employee retire वाले point के याग तीन ने salary के one percent consider कर ले याग मोलु और तो गाने में a benefit टेक तमाय याद दें right इड बस और उधर देखा यार पास से याग किसी point टेक वाया ही था ना ने अभी मैं के कई दशम पहाड़ देना किये right तो एक दिन नहीं होया तीते ऐसी टेल बाल पहाड़ पर नहीं थी यार की टाइम पीरियड देखे इंटरेयर लाइफ टाइम में का कंसीडर कर रहे हैं तो टान ए बिला वे बार पे नो बहुत ये काल सीमा वाले टाडा आलो होया या किसी एडजस्टमेंट का करंडो राइट सो दैट इस व्हाट वी कॉल्ड द पोस्ट सर्विस कॉस्ट इट कैन बी ए इंक्रीमेंट और ऐसा कुछ टर आडू ही मार्क दिए, राइट? दैट इस बेसिकली द पोस्ट सर्विस कॉस्ट। एंड देन आई टोल्ड यू टाइम टू टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू पे द बेनिफिट व्हेन द एम्प्लॉय रिटायर्स। यू नो देयर इस पूल ऑफ एम्प्लॉयज, सो देयर फॉर टाइम टू टाइम द एम्प्लॉय वुड रिटायर्स। एट दैट पॉइंट यू वुड हैव टू पे द बेनिफिट Having taken the service of actuary, you would find the remissionment gains and losses, and that should go to the OCI. So it's about the defined benefit liability. New employees join and leave. Before. Should it be adjusted when new employees join and uh, leave before the end of service period? Uh, you mean that uh, you are asking about this post-service cost for them? Uh, it is uh, actually uh, it no so it's not nothing to do with the uh, new employees because when the new employee comes so his uh, service starts from today so therefore if we have changed our plan so he is eligible under the present he is eligible under the present plan or the current plan so dalu thing api employee kine gattot ya ada indrana service ekak patan ganna तो कुत्ते यहाँ तक दाल वाली मैं आलू प्लान है तो इतने पास्ट सर्विस कॉस्ट का क्या लेना है मैं का दाल वाली दर्द तो मत इन ने एम्प्लॉयज लेटर आउट तो कीप या का पीते कर बैठे कर रखो अभी तो मु आउट तूने कट कली बैठे कर रखो कटी इन्नो पटांगा तो तो अभी तो दिदास दाहते वाकी जॉइन में चिकटी इन्नो अभी 
यालक समस्त काले में कंसीडर करें इधर अभी दिदास दाह हाथी इन दिला में एक गांड लगे ना नहीं मगर अभी देंगा तो इन्हें दस बीस इधर बोटान नहीं फास्ट सर्विस कंपोनेंट टिकर में तो ना अंदर लगा ना राइट देन देयर विल बी एन एडिशनल टू द प्लान एसेट व्हेन यू एम्प्लॉय जोइन सो एस आई टोल्ड यू बता सो बाय मेंटेनिंग दिस प्लान एसेट वी डोंट हैव अ काइंड ऑफ अ फिक्स कमिटमेंट वी डोंट हैव एनी फिक्स कमिटमेंट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे व्हाट यू नीड टू मेन एंश्योर दैट यूजिंग दिस प्लान एसेट वी कैन कवर अप दिस डिफाइंड बेनिफिट लायबिलिटी सो देयर फॉर यस ऑब्वियसली इफ द न्यू एम्प्लॉय एड्स इट मींस दैट इट इज बेटर यू Increase the amount that you would contribute to the plan asset, but there's no commitment for that. So it's kind of a professional judgment. You would have to decide the adequacy of this plan asset. The plan asset, the adequacy, the third nature, ne, we are pare ne. Kaniwaare me badi bendi kiya de apne hai namut. Yes, so it sounds good. It is sensible. So when the number of employees increases, it means that the defined benefit liability goes up. So in correspond, uh, correspond to that. So we can enhance the plan asset as well. Yes, good, right. Then let me come to the plan asset. As I told you, that uh, it's the money that you contribute to a particular kind of a fund. So at the beginning of the period, you can have this plan asset. Me, rather me plan asset to the balance brought forward. Well, if we talk here, okay. So then, most importantly, you need to compute the interest income. तब तक नहीं कि वैसे कहते हैं कहते हैं माया अभी इंटरेस्ट इनकम निकल दाने नहीं कराने दो। So when you are going to compute the interest income, you have to use the same discount rate that you had applied to this defined benefit liability। और defined benefit liability का apply करो तो इंटरेस्ट के कमता माय वो यहाँ में तरह दी कंसीडर कराने दो। Right? It is not the actual interest that it may offering, but the interest Income must be calculated based on the discounting rate, and that's what you do, right? Thereafter, as I said, so time to time there can be kind of a contribution. So if you contribute, it's a cash gets credit. Here it gets debit. It is the contribution made to contribution made to the plan. Plan is to contribute. Karana with you, ni? Your contribution ka karana puriya, right? So time to time, when they takes them out, so this is it. And then, like in the previous case, you may come to this endpoint, the balance carried forward, right? So considering this, you can take that value, right? Then what you have to do at this point, you need to do a kind of a fair value assessment. You need to assess the fair value of the plan asset again. You can depend on the actuary. You can uh, get the fair value. You can get the fair value of the plan asset. So once you get the fair uh, fair value, there can be gains and losses. So the other thing is the plan asset take a fair value will done. What the gains are losses there. So the one who took the what the number gain they took the no kill right. So the balance carry forward kill up the gain. So the fair value will come asset take. तीन फ़ेयर वैल्यू भी तो तमाम भी जानने तो तो दें तो तीन वैल्यूज़ ठीक है कंसीडर कर लेने वैल्यू बिकाई में फ़ेयर वैल्यू बिकाई डिफरेंट बिंदु पुरुवां समय का गेन निकाल कर लो सेका कर बिंदु पुरुवां हम इतना एक गेन निकाल के ल तो गेन निकाल के नो ते के अंदो ने पोसी � There is a remeasurement gain or loss can result from the defined benefit liability. Remeasurement gain or loss can result from the plan asset, and both of them should go to the OCI. And when you are taking that to the OCI, remember you are going to take the net remeasurement gain or loss. So, but all me standard degree thing, whether that means that me standard degree go down below focus karna set off it. तो बोलते हैं मैं तो आपे रीमेशनमन गेन ने कहा हाँ रीमेशनमन लॉस से का किया ला वैसे मेरे मारा गने आने ने मैं देखा कंसीडर कर ला नेट रीमेशनमन गेन नो लॉस से का तमाई यार गने आने नेट रीमेशनमन 
it can be the gain or loss, right? Let me say make free emission gain. That's what you take to the OCI. So me again dekha mane me kiri ani net karbu again samay kiri ani. So this is an instance where the netting off is allowed in the accounting standards. Or na accounting standards wala net off karana dena ekavas thao, right? Usually the net off is not allowed, but in this instance, yes, the net off must be there. Right, so to make OCI will be under a net impact. And also, when it comes to this interest expense and in the interest income, yes, again you need to do a kind of a net off. So you take them to the PNL. So you need to take the net net interest. Most of the time, the expense could be greatest. Depending on that, you can take net interest expense. Right. This is goes to this goes to the PNL, and when come to the current service cost, yes, it should go to the PNL. For service cost, it should also go to the PNL. Let's cut the end on it. PNL, right? So this is a net con, uh, cost, net uh, cost that goes to the PNL, and this is the net cost that goes to the OCI. And that is what you should do when come to the PNL and OCI. Presentation, right? And all these costs must be shown under the finance cost, right? These are finance cost, right? And when you come to the statement of financial position, statement of financial position again, you are going to do a netting off. What is that? This plan asset and the defined benefit obligation. You are going to again. Set them off and identify the net defined benefit liability. So usually, the liability component would be the greatest. So therefore, if I take the most likely case, so then you can take that under the non-current liabilities, the net defined benefit, net defined benefit obligation. Net defined benefit obligation. Like that, up to another garden only. But all statement of financial question, right? So make it. I'm going to be sit there. So you consider these two, and you take the net amount. So therefore, the net of is there considering the asset and liability as well as well as the income and expenses. So that is the summary of the defined benefit obligation and. The plan asset, the employee benefits, right? Okay. Now uh, let me take a kind of example and uh, let me show you exactly what this current service cost and post service cost will be. Okay. Maka kung kailan mga buhal dyan pin na nam podi udahar niya karagan together with the interest expense, right? Then make prior to the prior to sit the benefit. So in fact, this is they are in the accounting standard, uh, the accounting standard that is. The case nineteen, the employee benefit. The standard itself has the same kind of example, so you can even further refer them as well. But just to show you at this point, to keep the things simple, to keep the understanding simple about this defined benefit liability, uh, I'm going to assume an organization with a one employee. Happy to organization with the one employee can you keep right? There's a one employee. And uh, that particular employee, uh, let's say that there is uh, five years, five years for the retirement. Retirement, take it out of the pocket. Retirement. And today, that particular employee, let's say that he is enjoying an annual salary of say hundred thousand. He is having an annual salary of hundred thousand. This is the annual salary, and uh, we can expect even a growth in this. Let's say that annually, the salary growth, the annual salary growth, say two uh, percent or even one percent. Let's say one percent growth in the salary. Salary का सीरेक्ट गाने वैरी बिनवा किया लात तभी इतना, right? 
Okay. Then they are going to introduce a defined benefit plan. They are going to introduce a defined benefit plan. What is that? They are going to pay this employee uh, a benefit of say 2%, 2% from his final salary, salary considering his period, his period of service. Period of service. Okay. Period of service occur, consider Kerala. That then they are not here. They have a benefit take up uh, final salary. The butter up to pay me employee out of the park service. Sir, no other in the lap. So, what is Sam out with the me final salary? King see it a deca. The benefit take up in a video. Come up here. Our son a benefit take a gun and acre and own. Right. So, that is the defined benefit plan. So, if the things as such, so let us identify what is the final salary and what is their annual uh, benefit that this particular employee is getting. So you can see that uh, this particular employee is, is expected to retire in five years time. So therefore, if you are to compute the final salary, it's going to be simply the 100,000, 100,000, the current salary, the one plus the growth rate you have to take that is 1%. Growth and that is for a period of five years, right? So maybe the other mum formula can apply to that. That be no. How to pay him? Maybe salary is here. Okay, right? How much is the final salary? It's hundred five thousand hundred one. Final salary. Me retire any point? Okay. Can I be then? Did ask this? This this this. Ne kiri do? Did ask this? If I retire any point? Then I get final salary. Okay, no. One lakh shpandas. One lakh sieka. So, the benefit is the salary king 2%, 2% annually. So, for the final salary king, you are going to give the benefit of 2%. So, therefore, this particular employee is eligible to get an annual benefit of 2,102. The last year, Benefit take up the money after annually humbling. So, if you make a car sima or dagam, put palavinia out the aki, the venia out the two many out the hatrin or passing out the young gut to make a palavinia out the aki, benefit take a key up in other two thousand hundred two point zero two. Right? So, take the money out the palavinia out the third sam out the community theater, a benefit taken at humbling. Yes, you can see what the plan is. 2,102.2 So now you can simply take the addition and uh, you can decide what is their, what is his final uh, benefit value. So if you want to give the benefit value, you can give the benefit value. So, the way you are doing the you service. So, the hard task is to see the guy, the director, and the knowledge. So, you can simply drag this. Right. In the water, may employ our parking retire when a quarter, a pidenama, the Hadas, Pansi, the Hai Sata attack, Yata then go. So, they are the park, a pity service, a denoki little. Right, I recruit the plan eligible. The plan is 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 eligible. So before we move on, does that make sense? Yeah, would like to have some form of a feedback. Feedback, yeah, then with our body. Does that make sense? If anything that you are not clear, just tell me, then I can further explain, right? Anything that you could not get, 
Yeah. Clear, right, okay. How do you get the annual benefit? Uh, this is how I get that done. So here, the uh, it was said that uh, here, there's employee who recruits today. So he's giving his annual salary of 100,000 and his salary is expected to grow by 1%. So therefore he expect to retire from five years time, right? So according to the plan, we need to give a particular retirement benefit and that is our defined benefit plan. And what is our defined benefit plan? We need to pay this employee 2% from his final salary considering his period of service. So then we might require to work out what is his final salary. So rather lakshya di lagan na ki naata api aurudda gaane siya teka ka vetu vedi bhi mat deno na ki aurudda pahai varo ne tena ya gaoti ye ek lakshya panda se kasi ek ak ek tama ya ki final salary. So ya ar benefit teka den do ne ya ki service se ka consider karna. So ta ya ki service se ka aurudda gaane ya serve karna aurudda pahak pura vata ita kota api aurudda kota siya te deka ak vene vidi ek tama me benefit teka yaan do. So ya api seve karna sam aurudda kota ma या एलिजिबल बने हुआ देदास से किसी देखा कर बेनिफिट दे, राइट? ये तो कुटे ये ठीक है मामा एक तो कर ले बैल हुआ तो अरे मामा देख कावस आने आउट तो पहाड़ बने कुटे या दाह दास पांच ये दाह या इस तरह आटा कटे एलिजिबल बने आउट तो पहाड़ में यहाँ सर्विस से कर दोनों देख बेरीला हरिया आउट तो तुनाक यार दहादास पांच से दहाई सत्ता आटा भी देख दो तो यार करने से भी सिखाते कि तमाम अभी इधर तीर नहीं करा राइट ओके नाउ लेट मी मूव ऑन राइट इतने उठ आप ही देख बाल हो सो यू विल बी गिविंग दिस पर्टिकुलर बेनिफिट टू दिस एम्प्लॉयी इन फाइव इयर्स टाइम नहीं सो कंसीडरिंग हिस सर्विस सो एट द एंड ऑफ � बोलते हैं यहाँ मैं आगे मैं एम्प्लॉयी की सर्विस एक गाना हो तो यार ये पेमेंट एक कराने आउट तो पहाड़ के पास तो आप ही तो मैं एम्प्लॉयी आप ही आउट तक सर्विस करा के ला पहले नहीं आउट दियो ना सर्विस करा आप ही तो आउट पटांगा तक फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल 2020 अपने को पटांगा तक के लिए तो तो बोल रहा हूँ पे वाले में � राइट तो आउट दाख वैटर करी मनीषा या ये बेनिफिट टेकर है एलिजिबल इधर बोलता है आप ही मेक गेवान निकाबाद द आउट दो पहाड़ वसान है ना दें पहले नहीं आउट दो वसान या पीन ने तब आउट दो इकाई देकाई तुनाई हाथर की इंतमाई में दिदास से किसी देकाई साता देका गेवान इधर बोलता है you need to consider about the discount rate. Let's say the discount rate is 10%. So if you assume that the discount rate is going to be 10%, or let's say 8%. So since we have taken one, otherwise there can be problem. Let me say it's 0 0.08. And that is into how many years? Now you are in the, at the end of the year one, one, two, three, four. Right. Then today you have to contribute 1,545.05 for this particular employee. And that is what we call the current service cost. And this is what we call the current service cost. Next time we the current service cost. Right. So me, young employee, the service what he provides based on that, if we have a particular uh, amount to be paid, particular benefit to be paid, and that's what we call the current service cost. So, I am going current service cost take here that got the in the make here value. So, therefore, at the end of the year one, you can see that the current service cost is 1,545. And I told you that we are taking them at the present value, right? Now, you must be clear with that. So, therefore, at the end of the year one, if I take the account, if I take the defined benefit obligation value. So the defined benefit obligation value at the end of the year one is 1545.05. So the defined benefit obligation, defined benefit obligation, yeah, obligation. 
obligation beginning of the period e kiyanne ilanga avurudda kiyala metana hituwot thunai tissi ekak iwaruna kiyanne 2021 eka 4 eka onna api obligation eka value eka idu pasu oya dannawa kohomada meka operate wenne you need to compute interest interest eka oyata compute karanna ona so you need to compute the interest considering 8% and this is what we call the interest expense namu dala api athana gatta interest expense right then the current service cost ait ganna one current service cost for in our dure deweni avurudde current service cost kohomada ganne so if that particular employee works for another year he is eligible for another 2102.2 but it is being paid in 3 years time eka giwanne avurudda thunaki ena api meka gatta divided by 1. Point, uh, what do you call 08 now how many years to go 1 2 3 into 3 so this is the current service cost of the second year now if you want to take the obligation and this is it and to keep it simple i'm forgetting about uh, this remeasurement the service that you take from the actuary so i'm forgetting about that just to keep it simple and if that is the case this is going to be the obligation and similarly the next year starts like this maybe the real out the patanga no but then pulu and the gentleman interest to compute current may be the item right interest to get a computer and pull up outstanding balance so the tower would not serve for the employee tower did ask to see the game eligible with the reiki tapi gunny discounted value picker how to do the king given paid in two years time right so now you can take the obligation at the end and that is going to be the obligation at the beginning of the period compute the interest in the next year also the current service cost has to be paid 1.08 into 1 year and here the final year at the end of the final year you are paying the simple amount and with that you can see this has become 10510.8 and this is your Define benefit obligation throughout the period, right? So make the amount of defined benefit obligation, right? So now you must be pretty much clear with how this current service cost works and how this interest expense works. So this particular kind of uh, understanding may not require for the purpose of examination, but this is for the knowledge, right? Then you are having a kind of a sound understanding what this interest expense and what this current service cost is then if you interested in what is post service cost you can also look at the post service cost is something like this it says that it is a kind of uh, assessment of the uh, present value of the defined benefit obligation right the post service cost you are going to adjust it's a kind of adjustment to the uh, defined benefit obligation but post service cost ek kiyanne api defined benefit obligation ek present value ekata siddha karana adjustment ekak right so metara kutala apita peenawa then api eduma avurudu tunak wage giye putanaka me obligation ekata yam kisi wenasak karanna hitana api edumu e wenas thamai me benefit ekak api kiwa kalin final salary eken 2% දෙන්න හිතුවේ අපි දුම 2% නෙමෙයි මෙයාලා හිතනවා 2.5% දෙන්න කියලා right final salary king annually යාට දෙන්න නම් benefit එකක් 2.5% කියලා මේ හිතන්නේ අවුරුදු තුනක් ගියපු තැන right නමුත් ඒක අතීතයේ ඉඳලා බල පැවැත්වෙන ඒක මේ employee අපි බඳව ගත්තේ 2024 එක එතකොට මෙයා දැන්ටපත් අවුරුදු තුනක් අපිට serve කරපු කෙනෙක් 
So day point we are happy with this uh, performance. So therefore we thought of revising our defined benefit plan and offering him 2.5%. Uh, so therefore, if I take this new plan, new situation, I can simply copy this and accommodate the new situation. So I'm going to make copy the logita. Our situation like accommodate karo. Tapi then our the kar dena. 2627.53. Right? Ev di re angle thamai apni. Make the dendo. So this is the situation, right? So the, according to this particular plan, you can see that. So we are supposed to pay at the end of the fifth year, this employee 13,137.6. Dhatun da sekasi tisa tai dasama hayak api me employee te givando one, right? Ito kota, May employee Aurud to not work Kerlatin. It water, a Aurud to Nata Dalava, a benefit take a bad work, seven thousand eight hundred eighty two point five two benefit take a care on Kerlatin. So Aurud the Grapida size, which he had taken on, the Aurud to not mea, better curb Nisa, Meagi, benefit take a window, a hat does at a seer, a suit the Kai, Sutter, Panasata. Right? Do not make a defined benefit obligation. Uh, account ticker demo tapi me ma present value ticker thamai uh, present value ticker thamai api me ka maintain karan defined benefit obligation plan to api men me 7882 kiyana benefit ticker gewanne kawadda eka api awurudu paha awasane thamai eka payment ticker denne etukota ada defined benefit obligation ekke value ekke kiyada kiyala balanna puluwang apita me 7882.52 if you discount that you are paying that in two years' time. So if I take this value, right, and get them discount at 0 0.08, and that is into one, two. So that benefit value is 6,758.04. Accordingly, according to this new plan, so our obligation, the value of our defined benefit obligation at the end of the third year has to be 6,758.04. But according to our present plan, we have 5,406.74. So accordingly, you can see that there's a difference. And different, that difference is considering the whole period but you have identified that in the current year. So therefore you can take this 1,351.3 as an adjustment to this. And accordingly, it's going to be your past service cost. So take it on the past service costing. So what the account take ahead with too many out of the data level, if I'm just to show you, with the too many out of the Patanga number with the Rafiga, the Patunda Stun Sietis Hatai Satatalis Paha, the interest cost take a compute curl at this year at a high is at the current service cost take at Mamandu Nagaratibuna to me out the Igda Satasi de Kak or something on a poor service cost take a theater when me obligations the key Venice, he can Igda Stunsi Paransika. You can take that to 6758.04. So, therefore, now you should be convinced that this four service cost would come into play in an instance where there's a change to the uh, defined benefit obligation plan. Defined benefit obligation plan, make it up. We can see our star of the winner succeed the crop or keep a first say a when is the guinea mat taker up a defined benefit obligation. Make it a vendor put one adjustment to come my post service cost again. So they for okay, call see mouse yell like my salary let other than the my adjustment to cut up right. So that's what we do.
So that's it. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, for service cost. So I'm just to, I'm just trying to give you kind of a understanding how it works for service cost. So now you may be having a kind of a strong sense what these figures are rather than just assuming what this current service cost, interest expense and post service cost. Now you have a, uh, some uh, understanding and that's what I wanted to provide you with and see whether you are getting that. Take the with burn color. If there's anything not clear, yes, do let me know. Then I might be able to help you with that. So the working out the question is not going to be a big deal. You can manage it within five minutes, I would say. But the most important thing is uh, you're understanding this concept. So if anything that you're not getting, so do let me know. Even if you're getting that, uh, yes. Come on, uh, I need uh, some kind of feedback. It's clear, right? Okay, good. Right, then thank you. So let us move on to the question. Okay, good. Right, now let's look at the question. The following information relate to the commercial PLC's defined benefit plan. So you are given all the information, but is required, provide the net cost to be recognized in the profit or loss for the end of 31st March 2020, provide the net cost to be recognized in other comprehensive income, as well as provide the extracts from a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uta. Right. Okay. So let us uh, take this question and let's go and work the things out. Okay, so I have just uh, copied the question. Uh, so I feel that uh, it is quite easy if we can take the ledger accounts and work this out. So therefore, let me stick to that. Let us take two ledger accounts. Let, let us work this out together because we have to work out one more tutorial as well. So it always takes time. Uh, so, so let's look at this together and then let me leave the other question for you to uh, work on your own, right? Okay. So then you can take this, the plan asset. This is the plan asset. You have it and this is the defined benefit, benefit liability. So let us take the information. First, it says that the fair value of the plan asset 95,000. At the beginning of the period, fair value of the plan asset, the balance brought forward 95,000. Then you have the defined benefit obligation. At the beginning of the period, it is 100,000. Okay. So this is balance brought forward. Then you have the information, the service cost. Service cost for the year is provided you. It's 9,000. You know where it should come and you know uh, that is based on the service that the employees are pro uh, has provided during the year. And it's a present value. So those are the insights now you may have. Service cost. And then you have the discount rate, it's 10%. So if you have the discount rate, you know, 
that is for the purpose of interest computation. You can take the interest expense. And apply that 10%. Yeah, so this is the interest expense. Similarly, you can apply that to the plan asset as well, compute the interest income. You can calculate the interest income as well. It's 95,000. As I told you, you have to apply the same interest rate. It's 9,500. Then you have the past service cost as well. Okay, if you have the past service cost, that should also be taken. So they would have made a kind of a change to the uh, employment, uh, the post employment benefit plan. Hence, considering the period, you are taking the expense. Uh, then you have the contribution to the plan by the employer during the period. Okay, it's a kind of contribution. So the cash gets credit, here it gets debit, it's the contribution. Then you have uh, the benefits paid. So I told you that if the benefits being paid, you simply credit the plan asset and take the defined benefit liability debit. 12,000, it comes from the plan asset. So it is simply you want to pay that out, you credit cash, uh, sorry, yeah, you credit cash and you debit over here. And for that purpose, you can withdraw from the plan. So you debit cash, credit plan asset. So there's no point of debiting and crediting the cash. So just keep the entries uh, to the defined benefit liability and plan asset. Then uh, you come to the remeasurement and you have remeasure uh, this plan asset and you found the fair value to be 106,000, 106,000. Similarly, you have taken the service of the actuary and uh, it was measured at 115,000. So the balance carried forward, 115,000, right. Now let us uh, see what is the situation of the asset. Which side is the greatest? I think it's the credit side would be the greatest. 106, 118,000, 118,000. And here we have it. You can take them. It's 3,500. This should go to the, it's a remeasurement uh, gain. Remeasurement gain should go to the OCI. It's your remeasurement. Again, remission and gain. Similarly, you can look at which side is the greatest. Uh, it's 110, 19, 13 here. Again, uh, this side is the greatest. <clears throat> you can take the summation. Okay, 127,000, 127,000. So there it comes to 5,000 and it's a kind of a uh, remeasurement loss. It should go to the OCI and that is remeasurement loss. Remeasurement loss is there. Okay. Now you can uh, show the required things. First it asks us provide the net cost to be recognized in the profit or loss. So what are the net costs to be recognized? So let's take the requirement in. What is that? First, you need to consider about the net interest expense. No? Net interest expense. Net interest expense. So there you have the interest expense of 10,000, 9,500 is deducted, 500. Then you have the service cost, current service cost, post service cost, you know, Those two has to be the uh, things what we uh, service cost, current service cost, and it is past service cost. It's 
its current service cost it's 9000 and the past service cost that is 3000 net cost this is the net cost and you can take this net cost and show them under the finance cost when it comes as a part of the finance cost. Then it asks the second requirement provide the net cost to be recognized in the other company's income. Okay. So, what about the net cost to be recognized in the other company's income? OCI remeasurement gain, remeasurement loss. You consider that and the remeasurement uh, ultimately loss. No? Net remeasurement loss. Remeasurement loss is there. And that is 1500. 1500, it's a loss. And these are also the expenses now. Just to make it. All right, this is it. Remeasurement loss we present 1500. Then it asks us to show an extract from the statement of profit or loss and other companies income for the year ended 31st March 2020 and a statement of financial position. So you can just check that, take that extracts from statement of profit or loss. And other companies income for the year ended 31st March 2021. So, usually you are showing them under one heading, but uh, so here we may be showing them in the more elaborated way. So, therefore, under the finance expenses, uh, if you can show a one figure that is good enough, but let me show them in the more Elaborative right? Net interest expenses, current service cost, and post past service cost. Then under the other company's income, company's income, you can take this. Net remeasurement loss. Otherwise, you could have said that uh, remeasurement loss net that even works. Ne? Remeasurement loss is a net key. Remeasurement loss 1500. So, this is also going to constitute a reserve in the statement of financial position. Right now we come to the statement of financial question. You can take that statement of financial question. Asset thirty first March two thousand twenty. So you are having a kind of a liability. Under the non-current liability, you can show the net defined benefit liability. Net defined benefit defined benefit liability. So that is the net off, uh, as I told you. So you need to net off that and take it. And how much? It's uh, 115,000 and uh, 106,000. So once you net them off against each other, that's going to give you 9,000. No? It's 115,000 obligation, 106,000 asset. So it's the net liability, 9,000. And also you can even show a reserve since we have taken that uh, the OCI, so therefore it's under the equity. We have a reserve that is uh, reserve on 
find benefit. Find. Fit. Obligation here. Yeah. And that result you have a negative value, 1500, right? So this is about the complete depiction of the situation, right? So in case of the examination, so you are supposed to manage something of this nature. So if you can do that, yes, that's it. So it's not going to be a huge task. It's all about uh, having a kind of understanding uh, where these, each of these items should go. But uh, I believe that uh, you should know more than that. So that's why we go and explore uh, what those aspects really are. Now those aspects must make perfect sense to you, right? So if I take the next question, it is uh, something similar to this. So in fact, this is the <clears throat> question uh, what has been tested uh, in the last exam paper. Uh, people present value of the defined benefit obligation make a deal at you know the aram is how sunny fair value because we are going to do due to the changes in the condition the present value of the defined benefit obligation was increased by five percent so that is in the sense it's a past service cost make a target on it what a past service cost take up some money right during the end, 31st March 2020, the defined benefit uh, plan asset received 400,000 contribution. It's a contribution to the plan asset and paid 240,000 to employees who retire. So that is the amount what you have paid. The increase in the present value of the defined benefit obligation arising from the uh, employee services in the current period is uh, 380,000. So it is the current service cost. The applicable discount rate is given. You can compute the interest and the loss on remissionment of the defined benefit planned asset would also be provided. So therefore, everything is given. Uh, I believe you can manage it. So what's your thought? Any question on what we have discussed earlier? Oh, yeah. Well, under any question, I'm picking up the random question. I'm not going to take a minute to get done. Cool one. Yes, would like to hear from you. Yes, but I'm waiting for feedback, yeah. What's your thought? Are there any questions on what we have discussed? And what's your thought on what's your thought on uh, the other question? Should we need to work that out or you can manage on your own? Clear. Right. Okay. Then, uh, so let me leave. Uh, try to, you know. Okay. Good. So please provide the answer later. Uh, yes. So I might uh, upload the answer for that. Right. Okay. You better give it a try. Then uh, I might uh, after some time I might upload the answer. Then you can check on that. Okay. Good. Fine. Then with that uh, note, uh, we can finish the discussion on the defined benefit plans and let us move on to another important area that will be tested that is about the EPS, the most recent lecture that you had. So we are going to discuss some exam type questions. In fact, uh, some of the exam questions.
right? Okay, so hope you all can see the tutorial. Yeah, you can see it. It seems. So it's about the basic EPS and uh, the diluted EPS you may have to discuss, right? Okay. So let us read that question and see. It's a uh, comparatively very easy one, but we may look at systematically, right? Okay. For the end of 31st March 2020, uh, the Lenox, Lenox uh, PLC reports a profit after tax of rupees 1.05 million, right? Okay. The Lenox PLC has reported a profit after tax of 1.05 million. The dividends on convertible preference shares amounted to rupees 300,000. It's dividend on convertible preference shares, right? In fact, this was the last time question. The test question, right? The dividend on convertible preference shares amounted to rupees 300,000. The preference shares were classified as equity. My preference shares uh, classify equity equity with it, right? Okay. As of 1st of April 2019, there were 500,000 fully paid ordinary shares. For the period, 500,000 fully paid ordinary shares were there. No additional shares were issued during the year. The following information was also available as at 1st of April 2019. 250,000 convertible debentures which were paid interest at a rate of 10% per annum. This uh, debenture interest expense was 16,000 and are convertible into 125,000 ordinary shares. Adoption of the debenture holder. 20,000 share option currently on issue with an exercise price of rupees 2. Uh, 400,000 convertible preference shares uh, which were issued in 2018, convertible preference shares, what you had referred earlier, that was issued, issued in 2018 and convertible into 120,000 ordinary shares at the option of the preference shareholders, when that can be converted into uh, the shares, right? Ordinary shares. And the applicable tax rate is 33% and the average market price for ordinary shares during the year was rupees 5. Okay, then what you are supposed to do, calculate the basic earning per share and the diluted earning per share. Okay, uh, so would like uh, you to just uh, take, say, five to seven minutes, five to seven minutes and uh, give it a try. Uh, first, let's look at the basic earning per share. I will about basic earning per share workout currently required full one. Give it a try, then let's look at it. So it's sim simply you take the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders divided by the weighted average number of shares outstanding. If we are to take that earning per share, the simple formula, you take the profit attributable to attributable ordinary shareholders ordinary shareholders that i think profit taker take a divide under weighted average number of shares outstanding weighted average number of ordinary shares as outstanding So this is a simple formula that you should take and you can just work that out. So let me copy this information. So take two to three minutes and work that out. And thereafter, you can start even working on the diluted earning per share as well. Diluted earning per share, I can try out from there. Difficult to say. Pain hand. Yeah, now it's there.
Right, uh, so if you have uh, managed to get the answer, yes, you can indicate and depending on that, we can discuss. So it's about the basic EPS. Okay. It's a profit attributable to the all in shareholders uh, we are interested in. So here we have even the preference shareholders, which is also classified as equity and even the dividend being paid so uh, we need to uh, deduct that from the profit after tax and identify the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders and then get them divided by the weighted average number of ordinary shares right okay shall we look at that okay so here we get uh, 1000 sorry 1.05 million no? 1.05 Right. Minus, uh, you can see that the dividend that you have paid to these preference shareholders, that was 300,000. Okay, did up that and get them divided by the weighted average number of shares. The question would have said, the preference shares, okay, uh, 500,000, there were 500,000 fully paid ordinary shares. Right, there were 500,000 fully paid ordinary shares. So therefore, uh, the weighted average <coughs> number of shares it's 500,000. So, the of the So, if you look at that, now you can take 1050, three zeros minus 300,000 divided by 500,000. So, there it comes rupees uh, 1.05 per share. You can see that uh, you have paid rupees 1.5 per share earnings per share for every one share you are getting rupees 1.5 so it is the, the return that has been created the earnings right so it's straightforward so here the little uh, tricky one it's about the uh, diluted earning per share diluted earning per share so let us now look at the diluted earning per share, right? Diluted, diluted earnings per share. Okay, so when you come to the dilution, uh, as the term suggests, so there is a dilution in the earning per share, right? So therefore, you need to consider the <coughs> potential earnings shares and their impact and thereby Look at what is the effect that it has on the existing EPS. diluted earning per share earning per sorry, ordinary shares they will be potential ordinary shares consider Kerala, api Balanoa, aking EPS dilution effect. Right? Uh, when it comes to this question, there are different kinds of uh, potential ordinary shares, right? There are different kinds of potential ordinary shares. Ne? So you need to consider each of these categories separately, right? We call it the potential ordinary shares. Potential ordinary shares. So you can see that there are different categories. No, the first I would find that uh, it's a convertible preference shares. One possibility is convertible preference shares. The shares. Then you have uh, the other category. If you read, read the question, you can see that convertible debentures is there. No? The tau category convertible debentures theorem. Convertible debentures. And further, I saw that uh, even there are share options as well. Share options of theorem. So maybe the other category no? categories to not forget potential order shares theorem. No? Shares theorem, right? Uh, 
මේ වගේ කැටගරිස් තුනක් තියෙද අපි මේ වගේ බලන්න ඕන මොකක්ද what is the dilution effect so we need to then rank from the most dilutive to the least dilutive and then we are going to adjust that to the earning per share and see whether it is really dilutive or not එතන මුලින්ම පුතාලා අපි මේ different categories of potential ordinary shares අඳුන ගන්නවා ඊට පස්සේ අපි බලමු ඒකෙන් what is the impact that it has on the eps eps ට තියෙන impact එක මොකක්ද කියලා so the first one it is about the convertible debentures so the convertible preference shares it says that 400000 convertible preference shares which were issued into 2018 and are convertible into 120000 ordinary shares at the option of the preference shareholders so preference shareholders like option එකට අනුව මේක 120000 කට convert කරන්න පුළුවන් එතකොට අපි දන්නවා EPS වලට තියෙන impact එක තමයි මේ shares වලට මේ ටිකේ එකතු වෙනවනේ so the 120000 shares වලට add වෙනවා convertible preference shares වලින් තියෙන impact එක ඔන්න so it gets added 120000 to uh what do you call to the shares and at the same time what is the impact that it has to the profit you can see during the period they have paid a dividend sorry dividend ekak pay karala thiyena utala how much it's There's something that wrong with that. Let me refer to that uh, question. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are discussing about the convertible preference shares. What is their impact? Hundred twenty thousand shares being added. to uh, the number of shares and on the other hand it's making a kind of a uh, positive impact to the profit because uh, you have paid them with uh, a kind of a dividend and that dividend was 300000 so if this become the ordinary shares this 300000 is getting added to the profit getting added to this profit you don't have to deduct it it necessarily you can add them so therefore it is having this much of effect 300000 so it at 300000 to uh, the profit and 120000 to the shares so therefore if you consider its impact is 300000 divided by 120000 so it makes this much of impact right तो एक इन तीन इंपैक्ट के मेन में वाकी देखते हैं तो तीन में देखा है तो सुना पाहा मगर मैं काफी आवश्यक है ना मगर मां क्यों रैंकिंग का कर रखा है उन्हें फ्रॉम मोस्ट डायलूटिव तू द लीस्ट डायलूटिव सो यू नीड टू आईडेंटिफाई विच इस हैविंग द मोस्ट डायलूटिव इफेक्ट एंड विच इस ह� then what you have uh, the next one it's about uh, the convertible debentures so because of this convertible debentures you can in the future 125000 uh, shares this can be converted into and the debenture interest expense of 16000 even you don't have to incur that anagathedi but uh, sorry uh, so in the future you don't have to pay this 16000 interest so if they become converted into shares so it is not uh, entirely 16000 the impact that it has but subject to the interest no so therefore you must need to take this 16000 into 1 minus the tax rate what is the tax rate the tax rate was found to be 33% 33%. So this is the 
kind of uh, favorable addition to this trophy. But another thing is that the other thing is that the other thing is that the convertible dimensions are sold to convert growth. That is interesting. Give one of us in the name. Are you ready? Convertible reference is sold to dividend. Now, the other thing is that the interest impact is considered to be the same as the profit after tax on the main distribution. Now, convertible dimensions, the interest what you incur, so it is taken as a finance expense, so therefore it's tax deductible. So therefore, when you are taking the impact that it has on the profit, you must adjust the tax and take the tax adjusted impact. So it is not the 16,000, but the 10,720, that is the impact that it has to the profit. It increases profit by 10,720. So at the same time, so it adds some shares to the weighted average number of shares and that's going to be 120. 5,000. So it said this much of shares. So again, if I want to consider what is the impact to this EPS, it makes this much of impact. So this is the impact that it has on the profit. So it has on the EPS. So the EPS will have the impact of the market. So it will have the dilution of the market. So it will have the dilution of the market. Data pada wedi permainan yang number of shares sold itu kecil lagi. So, dia nuh, itu nih dilutiu efek tekak tiu nih, it's comparatively high, right? Then what about the share options? So in the share options, it says that there are twenty thousand share options currently on issue with an exercise price of rupees two, with an exercise price of rupees two. Okay, so here. When it comes to the share option, you need to consider about the uh, bonus element, bonus element, right? So here, in fact, uh, even at the point of exercise, so they do have to pay rupees two. So therefore, 20,000 into two, you are going to collect uh, a consideration of 40,000. 40,000 consideration is there. Uh, but uh, you should have charged rupees five, for these 20,000 shares. So, I mean, share it, I put that up. I can under the bar in on. Fahak, right? The park I can run on it. But 20,000 would be hard enough. 100,000 charge current on in a mood. A charge current name. Two into 20,000, 40,000. So, I'll be that the demand. May consideration negative forty thousand worth of shares at the time issue current the be key at the the market price of the share per share is rupees five. So therefore, actually for this fourteen thousand under normal circumstances, we could only manage to issue eight thousand shares. Shares at the half time is common in a bit of issue current pull. Now with me option again is happy. We see the issue current there. So rapid pain with an honor bonus shares per money at the end. एक आप ही कंसीडर करने दो ने आपे डाइल्यूटेड एनिंग पर शेयर गणने के लिए व्हाट इस द बोनस एलिमेंट ऑफ द शेयर्स में शेयर्स वाले दिए ना बोनस एलिमेंट नॉट द एंटायर शेयर्स बिकॉज़ इट कम्स एट अ प्राइस ने या हम किसी प्राइस से का काबी चार्ज करना है निशा में सियाल में आपे ऐड करने ने हैं डाइल इशू करने शेयर्स आप ही कंसीडर कराने नहीं हैं नहीं मैं नहीं थिंक विविध पॉइंट्स और जब विविध विधियर शेयर्स इशू कराने नहीं पुलवाने तो वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू कंसीडर एवरीथिंग बट द व्हाट यू कॉल द बोनस कंपोनेंट तो आप ही शेयर का एक्सरसाइज कराने देने रुपया देखेगा नहीं तो वो विविध ह for this 40,000 consideration, you could have only issued 8,000 shares. But now you are ready to issue how many shares? It is 20,000 shares. 20,000 shares are issued currently. 20,000. This is a share option. Right? So therefore, you can look at the bonus element, bonus component, that is. component it is the 
20,000 minus 8,000. So that is the impact that it has. Once, once these options are exercised, that is the dilutive effect it has. So take the mind dilutive effect. And what it adds to the profit, profit in addition, these are ordinary shares, it adds nothing. So therefore, uh, in an instance, right, if you take the share options, and that is the one which is having the greatest dilutive effect on the EPS. options significant impact EPS significant dilutive impact EPS right? So the shares add profit The convertible shares convert it then happy to give anti interest ticker, save beno. So the MC addition nicatino. Convertible preference shares, convert crop, give anti dividend nicca, now tino. So it then a saving cactino profit ticket. Now with the share option sold at the other way in a gain a cacne, so that is also the ordinary shares. So put a may ordinary shares issue crop, a pretty and dilutive impact a cacti in a bonus element ticket. Rata the hack, but in a share sold at the market price of charge curno and sa. Twelve thousand the bonus shares. That's a problem. It and it adds nothing. So therefore, if I want to give a ranking, and this is the most dilutive. This is the rank. So you need to give a rank for that because when it comes to the dilutive uh, earning per share, you are going to consider each of these potential ordinary shares, right? As long as it dilutes, you continues in a point. If you find that it is anti dilutive, you are going to stop. So, the main ranking up, I will correct the question. I will tell you that the option is dilutive. So, the dilutive is not a piece of the So, the ambition point is not a dilutive, it is anti dilutive. So, we exclude it. We will tell you that we have a diluted earning per share computation. Right, then you may get into the understanding. Right. So the share options consider then diluted earning per share. Let's take the diluted earning per share. Right. So here what it does, uh, if you have the share options, what it does is the profit attributable. Uh, how much, how much it is there? It's uh, 750, no, eight or nine hundred, yeah, 750,000, no? The profit is 750,000, the existing profit, right? 750,000, and it adds nothing here. Profit, right? It adds nothing, and you can divide this by, The number of shares at the moment you have 500,000. For this 500,000 shares, here it adds 12,000. Dollars the hack had been on it. So, to make the my diluted earning per share, I could win. So, to at last, the panas the hack, better now than one last year, dollars the hack. So, you can see that the diluted earning per share. It's 1.465. 1.46, let's see. Then we the ordinary share EPS is 1.5. Once you adjust this share options impact, you can see that there is a dilution. How do we make the EPS? Oh, they can make a dilutive. So therefore, the share options is dilutive. In fact, that is the uh, most dilutive uh, potential ordinary share. It was happy that convertible debentures volatile. It is not that illa diluted earning per share. Now we are going to incorporate both the impacts. This is what you have at the moment. And you are going to add 10,000 
you can see that it further dilutes dilute dilute you can see that so whether it's dilute or not how you decide it is simply referring to the earning per share right judgment anti-dilutive dilutive මේ සෑම් ඔප්ෂන් එකක් අවසානයේම අපි රිෆර් කරලා බලනවා EPS එකට. EPS එකට වඩා අඩු නම් ඒකට තමයි ඩයලූටිව් කියන්නේ. බැරි වෙලා හරි EPS එකට වඩා වැඩිපුර යනවා නම් තමයි අපි ඒක ඇන්ටි ඩයලූටිව් කියලා කියන්නේ. ඒතර මෙතනත් එතන ඇන්ටි ඩයලූෂන් එකක් නැහැ ඩයලූටිව් ඉම්පැක්ට් එකක් තියෙනවා. බලමු ඊළඟ අවස්ථාවත් ඉන්කෝපරේට් කරලා තර්ඩ් එකට ගිහිල්ලා. What about dividend per earning per share? Not dividend, diluted earning per share. But Five hundred thousand. Those are the number of shares that you had. Then you add twelve thousand, the share option, plus one hundred twenty-five thousand convertible debentures, plus the convertible preferentials, one hundred twenty thousand. Right. Many again we do not for now. It is any per share again. So in case of the examination, we are provided in a much structured way. So therefore, for these workings, you have plenty of space, right? So we have to uh, 1,060,720. 1,060,720. Eka divide karamu. 500, 625, 637, 657, 757, 757. So it is 1.4. Still, it dilutes. So, still it dilutes. Having even incorporate the third instance, it is still dilutes. So, therefore, what is your diluted earning per share? It's this 1.40. So, the diluted earning per share I option dilute it's not 1.4 and diluted earning per share. So that is the most important learning outcome, right? So you need to look at from most dilutive to the least dilutive. So in the process, in one point in time, if you found, if you find uh, it is uh, not, uh, that it, it doesn't dilute or it's, anti dilute you, you are going to stop. Otherwise, you are going to continue. So, may 
एक ऑप्शन लेके ऑप्शन लेके आप ये इंडोने तो वो इंडोने त्रयंक के काट दिए ना मोस्ट डाइल्यूटिव इंपैक्ट के दिए ने कि इंद्र तमाह इंडोन दें मित्र बेल वुड सीरो तो घोटे प्रॉफिट टेकर किसी में देखा एडवेंट नहीं है नहीं तो एक तमाह तो घोटे सिग्निफिकेंट में डाइल्यूशन का तो मित्र यम मट्टम के टे होंडाई मौका तो प्रॉफिट टेकर दाह दास हाथ सी विस्सा के कतुम तो एक ही रैंक पहले रैंकिंग ही देख मोस्ट डाइल्यूटिव वेवा भी बाला नहीं राइट रैंक के देने मोस्ट डाइल्यूटिव राइट मोस्ट डाइल्यूटिव ये बसे अभी तुम्हें नहीं आस्था आट बैलो तो एक ही अभी तो पेन हुआ एक सिग्निफिकेंटली इट्स गुड बिकॉज़ इट एड सम प्रॉफिट एस वेल एस इट एड नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स बट इट इज क्वाइट लेस सो इवन आई थोर्ड दैट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी � अभी ये देवाल टिक ऐड कर ले बेलू वाले पास से अभी टिप्पू ना वर्कआउट करने कोटे इतना अवसान वाशिंग वन मिलियन सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी इट हैज़ टू बी डिवाइडेड बाय द सेवन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी सेवन थाउजेंड शेयर्स फाइव हंड्रेड सिक्स हंड्रेड सेवन हंड्रेड सेवन हंड्रेड फोर्टी सेवन फिफ्टी फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव सेवन हंड्रेड सेवन या फाइव तो वो टापी टिप्पू ना मित मैं सेम अवस्था आ गई हूँ अभी मूव है ना वो टापी बाला ना मैं का कम प्यार कर ला एनी पर शेयर का टिक वो टे एनी पर शेयर का टपड़ा बिलो नंती है ने अभी इस तरह टे आना राइट तो वो इलाग अवस्था वो टा दिल बाला ना एनी पर शेयर टे पहल इन्द्र दिए की इट बस से अभी ताऊ दो टाट स्टार्ट आना सो दें so here is uh, one thing one doubt uh, that comes in my mind uh, here when we are looking at that uh, here uh, it goes in the dilutive way and then it started the anti dilutive way no? yeah yeah Right. But I said for D where the kuna for D where the kuna right. I'm sorry. So when we are deciding this anti-dilutive, when you are going in this direction, we are compare karanne EPS ka tikka ne me. Right. EPS ka tikka ne me. Atre me compare karanne we are me haling tiye na diluted earning per share ka tikka balane. Then abhi value thale ni avastha hai. But abhi be no diluted earning per share one point four six kila villa thi. तो देवनी एक इनकॉर्पोरेट कर लगा तेरे पास एकाई दस में एकाई नवया काव तो ये इतना उन्हें डायलूट होना इधर बस तुम्हें नहीं अवस्था वाले गिहिल लेवल हुआ इतना अभी एक पॉजिटिव मोमेंट का तमाती है एक याने वैरी वेला अन्य इतना तमाई अभी याने एंटी डायलूट होती है तो अभी नवती � डायलूशन Diluted earning per share can as the term suggests there must be a dilution in the earning per share. So therefore it is not the 1.4. It's sorry, I'm sorry. For that it must be 1.19. So you are coming from the most dilutive to the least dilutive in the uh, on your way from the least most dilutive to the least dilutive, you would find that. In some instances, it may go the other way around. Uh, in in that sense, it turns out to be anti-dilutive. So here, what you would see, it is anti-dilutive. So if you find that is anti-dilutive, so you have to stop in the last dilutive point. The last dilutive point was one point one nine. You came to one point four six, then one point one nine. 
and then you compare this 1.19 with this 1.5. So if it is less than the EPS, then yes, you are going to take that. So if not, you are going to uh, take what is the last dilutive, the most dilutive, right? So is that clear? <laughs> So uh, if you get uh, confused, yes, just let me know You're somewhere down the line. So I just missed one point. Sorry for that. But I had to give me a day. Okay, so I'm going to go to Does that make sense? Yes, just check that. Clear, right, okay, good, fine. Right, uh, then uh, can I take a few more time and uh, shall we look at one more question because uh, there I can show you uh, how to incorporate these right shares, uh, the right issue and the capitalization of or the capital, uh, what do you call that, bonus issue. I'm going to show you how to incorporate this bonus issue as well as the uh, right issue. So shall we, uh, Let's take another 20 minutes time and shall we work that out? We got that work out for the done. Okay, right. Fine. So let me take that. So let us take that question. Oops. So this was the question which we have tested uh, one before the last. So again, it's the same type question. Right, okay, I have just taken the question and let's so read the question and see how. It says that uh, the following information has been extracted from the consolidated financial statements of Jupiter, Mercury and uh, Saturn PLC, right? Uh, you are given the profit for the year after tax Profit attributable to non-controlling interest is also provided. Profit attributable to preference shareholders also given. Profit from the discontinued operation is given. The number of order shares at the beginning of the period and also the preference shares at the beginning of the period is provided. The preference shares of market PLC and Saturn PLC uh, are included respectively in the non-current non liabilities and equity. All right, it's a good point. So here, when you come to that uh, Mercury, uh, this uh, preference shares is classified as non-current liability. But when you come to the Saturn PLC, uh, it's classified as equity, okay? The following share issues has, have been made during the year ending 31st March, 2021. Jupiter PLC uh, made a public issue during the year 500,000 order shares at rupees 20 each. When it comes to Mercury, they have capitalized the reserves uh, by issuing 1 million order shares. Then the Saturn PLC, they have issued a right issue of one for every five shares. Okay. The market price of the shares uh, is provided and uh, the Jupiter PLC issued convertible debenture and that information is also provided. What is expected? Calculate the basic earning per share for the year 31st March 2021 for the three companies. Companies to not earning per share. Okay. So let us start. So since we are running out of time, let's do that quickly. So starting from the Jupiter. Right? We can take the EPS. Earning per share. It is the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. You can see the profit for the year 25, but the profit attributable to the NCI, you need to remove them and you need to take that. What is the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders? The profit attributable is part of the NCI. The profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders is going to be 23 million. So let us take the figures in thousands. The Hassan Kyavarin 
So it's 23,000. 23,000. Profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. Then what about the number of shares outstanding? The Jupiter PLC, uh, they have public issue of 500,000. Sorry, at the beginning of the period, how many shares were there? Number of ordinary shares, 1 million was there. 1 million was there. The figures are in uh, millions, yeah. It's uh, 23 million, yeah. I know. yeah. Okay, good. So here you can take the weighted average number of shares. So how much is the weighted average number of shares? 1 million is over here. And during the year, after six months, you have made a public issue. So therefore you need to take this 1 million shares is available for the entire period. So that must be considered. When it comes to this uh, 500,000 shares, so it is only available for six month time, six divided by 12. So therefore, if you are to take the weighted average number of shares, so it's going to be 1,250, no? 1,250. Otherwise, you could have calculated this simply. Uh, this 1 million is available for six months time. Then another 500,000 shares being issued, altogether it becomes 1,000. 500 now it is available for another six months so either way you be you must be ended up getting the same so take a total chemistry degree gun put on it me daha out the me variable here he can put the bar it was a fancy a kishu for no mass high cut pass say take a bit lara this year panha gun in that time a fancy mass high you know it was a pia for shias issue for no it is gonna be get up and keep so whatever the way that is convenient you must take it so it is 1,250. Okay, if you are to calculate that now, 23,000 divided by 1,250. The earning per share is rupees 18.4 per share. So that is the situation of the JPLC. Then you have the situation of MPLC. So before I take the MPLC, let me take the SPLC. Yeah? My SPLC is done now, enter Kali. In that, let us look at what is the profit attributable to the shareholders. Profit for the period is there. Uh, profit attributable to the preference shareholders are there. Also the profit from the discontinued operation. So what about uh, the preference shareholders? Uh, it's considered as equity, okay? Uh, it's considered as equity, certain PLC, uh, it's equity preference share. So therefore, we need to deduct both. It's 12 minus 2 minus 3. We are not going to consider the discontinued operations as well. Profit attributable to ordinary shareholders for 12 million tibba, taking 2 million preference shareholders at a dividend. 3 million is continued operation. So there we take 7 million, that is the profit. Then you need to take the ordinary shares outstanding. Uh, there you can see uh, this entity has 1 million shares outstanding. And uh, on 1st of January 2021, they have made a right issue. Uh, right issue eka karla thi. Right issue eka kibunang without consider karanda vino. Theoretical extra right price and see what is the bonus element and make an adjustment for the number of shares available. So, take a copy, see the current one. It's a copy, Bala Mutala, with a dilutive impact, you know, and with a bonus element, you know, shares, so the home of the main theoretical extra right price, a copy, got an acre. So, copy that no right issue, a copy, you know. You have to see dilution a copy, you know, like then a bonus element a copy, you know. So the A copy uh, weighted average number of shares for the galaxy marker and all. So take it up the adjustment factor, right? So you need to take an adjustment factor. 
then how do you take this adjustment factor? Kohumalatmi adjustment factor Gani. So it's simple. You need to see what is the total consideration. You can see that uh, you are issuing right for uh, every five shares, you are going to issue what? Sam Kotas Pahakatama, Ekak, Yetamai, issue Karan. So it's one for every five shares. So let me consider growth meta there. So let us look at what is the total consideration in this situation. So the main situation is that the total consideration is here. The key is here. So it says that the market price per uh, price of shares of uh, SPLC uh, as at 1st of April 2020 and 1st of January 20. 1st of April 2020. Sorry, here. Market price of the uh, shares of uh, SPLC as at 1st of April 2020 and 1st of January 2021. Huh? Sorry, it's a mistake over there. 2021, immediately prior to the right issue was 35 and 40 respectively. So, rapid dira tina dawas dekakata market price ka kiya dekila me SPLC ki to kore tani apit adawe ni buta right issue ek karanda immediately tibunu. Immediately prior to the right issue, the share pricing. So, this is my hatali hai kiya, right? Ita ko tapi adjustment factor ke work out karan. Ita ko tapi the pain ho. Shares paha ka take up issue karan ne. So, tapi value hot. Me shares paha me ani market price ke tar, right? Ita my applicable bin price ke tar. Ita my six share ke tar. Api da dal bin ne. Api da ham bin ne. Price for the right. So, we will issue the rupee and the rupee. So, we the situation we consider the situation. We will consider the situation in the situation. We will consider the situation in the situation. We will the situation in the situation. We will consider the situation in the situation. We will consider the situation in the situation. We will consider the Dilutive impact if you consider the law, it's going to be 225 now. 14 to 5, it is 200 into 25, 25, 225 divided by 6. So effectively, now the price per share is 37.5. I thought then effectively better to a bit of share the price of the value of the value of the Right? The market is the value of the what up you in Shias Paha? Eva give it in a comatino. We have a right ticket in Nivisi Pahakata, Yanwa, Samasta Shias high catapi consideration. Negate this Yusi Paha. The ekaka bed worth this satay doesn't pah. The rapid pain on a dilution a captain. Someone in market price a hathali high then, right issue a cut ticker, average market price a villa tino. Average market price a villa tino, thirty seven point five. Right. If you have an adjustment factor, you can divide the market price. This is the theoretical, theoretical x right price. price. And this is the market price. This is the market price. So the theoretical x right price is the market price. You can divide the market price. You can divide the adjustment factor. So this is what we call the adjustment factor. Right, it's 9375. This is the adjustment factor. Make the adjustment factor. So I'm going to the number of shares uh, that was there before the right issue must be adjusted by this adjustment factor. And then you can identify the number of shares. So the adjustment factor is if you apply the right issue, the weighted average number of shares will So, if you weighted average number of shares, work out the weighted average 
ෂෑ සති හොයා ගන්න ඕනේ දාලා අපිට පේනවද කොට කාලච්ඡේදයේ පටන් ගන්න කොට අපේ තිබ්බා අපි කාලච්ඡේදයේ පටන් ගත්තේ 1st of April 2019 I think uh, sorry 20 එතකොට ෂෑ ඉෂුව එක කරේ අපි රයිට් ඉෂුව එක කරේ අපි uh, 1st of January 2021 එතකොට මාස 9 කාලයක් තියෙනවා ඒතර බලමු කොච්චර weighted average number of shares දැන්ට තියෙනවද කියලා it's 1 million as at 1st of April 2020 So considering this period, if you look at the weighted average number of shares, it's going to be like this. It's only nine months into twelve. Masa na we are into me. So if you apply that into nine divided by twelve, here it comes the weighted average number of shares. It's seven hundred and fifty. So in order to reflect this dilutive effect, you need to apply this adjustment factor for this, and then you would get the a uh, weighted average number of shares what you should consider for the purpose of computation of the uh, eps so there you can get the 750 now what you need to do you need to increase the number of shares thereby you would see there's a decrease in the earning per share there is a dilutive impact ekak tibbama wenna one shares ga earning per share ek adu wenna ekane so the earning per share adu wenna nan number of shares वैरी बिंदु ये नंग मैं एडजस्टमेंट फैक्ट देखेंगे आप ही मैं कर डिवाइड कराना अन्न शेयर्स का अन्न वैरी बिंदु राइट नाउ दिस शेयर्स गोस टू 800 सो दे आप व्हाट यू शुड डू विथ दिस एडजस्टमेंट फैक्टर द वेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स अप टू द राइट इश्यू यू मस्ट टेक देम एंड डिवाइड इट बाय द एडजस्टमेंट फैक्टर दे आर बाय यू विथनेस अ ग्रेटर व्हाट यू कॉल नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स Now, uh, still the period goes on. Now you need to consider from first of January twenty twenty one to thirty first March twenty twenty one. So May period, dekha dekha maya selagi lete gando. So you had thousand shares up to this point. So that is the shares that was available. One million shares. Tiye no. But ekata apni then issue kara for every uh, five shares we are issuing one. तो आप इश्यू करना चाहिए आज की अगर इफ यू वर्क आउट यू आर हैविंग थाउजेंड थाउजेंड स्टैंड्स फॉर फाइव देन व्हाट इस वन इट्स टू हंड्रेड इतने बोले देखना भी तीनों आ मैं दिदास विषय के कई एक तो कम शेयर्स एक दास दिसिया राइट एक तो आप ये अप्लाई कर कर रहे हों ने इतने वेला थी ने खाली मास की अंतवयान अभी देना मिलने में वाकिया मांगते हैं। अतः तो 200 डिवाइडेड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 3 डिवाइडेड बाय 12, 300। सो वंस यू डू सो, यू कैन सी द नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग फॉर द पीरियड, दिस इज़ इट। है ना? मिलने तो ये ना नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स आउटस्टैंडिंग फॉर द पीरियड। सो यू हैव दिस 7,000, दैट इज़ द प्रॉफिट, नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स Now, if you divide, there it comes the earning per share. So, if you are to get the EPS, EPS is the total gain. Pulu ambo pasuing kia the seven thousand divided by one thousand one hundred. So, this is the earning per share. Balan dekhe pahedi pira pahedi nathi terang tibu na nang kya na I can explain it. See whether it's clear. Anything that you are not comfortable, there can be different ways of taking this adjustment factor and applying that. But at the end of the day, the reconciliation is whatever the method that you should apply, you should end up getting into this answer. So I don't know that what you have learned in the lecture may be different from this, but uh, whatever the method that you should apply, but at the end of the day, you must get into the same answer. Same answer at the end of the day. So that is the requirement. तर मैं का कर बुद्धि प्रोडक्ट सार लोग की वो तो सी सेकंड या यूज इन मतलब एट द एक्सेम कैन वी यूज एनी मतलब यस एस लॉन्ग एस यू प्रोड्यूस द करेक्ट आंसर दैट्स इट वह करेक्ट आंसर कर प्रोड्यूस करने दो है सो दैट मींस दैट व्हाट यू हैड लर्न इन द लेक्चर इज डिफरेंट टू व्हाट वी डिड हियर डू हियर और मैं कर बुद्धि र
right. university apply method so, මෙතන පොඩි සිම්පල් දෙයක් තියෙන්නේ අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම තියරිටිකල් එක්ස් රයිට් ප්‍රයිස් එක අපි හොයා ගන්න ඕනේ. ඒතර ඒක හොයා ගන්න මෙතඩ් එක වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ. මේක මම එක ෂෙයා එක තත්ත්වය සැලකිල්ලට ගත්තේ. ඒතර අපි සෑම ෂෙයා ස්පාකටම එකක් ඉෂූ කරේ. වෙල්දපලේ මිල 40යි. 40 5 200 225 225 තමයි අපිට ඒ ෂෙයාස් හයක් සඳහා යනු එක Market price is a Hatalia, Harina, Neoprom, the Sea Hatalia, come in the Benamutam, the Sea Sipaha. The return of the inner dilutive impact take up, a copy work out Kurgat, the adjustment factor. The adjustment factor that we work out Kurgat, the first say, a pig of the like the weighted average number of shares. The following the peach sugar latiba, millionia, the right issue economy does which he kayaka. Either party in weighted average shares like Hatsi Panahai, a copy adjustment factor in Bedua to pass say, a taker at a CAP guitar. The Berville Hari adjustment factor can make any pattern and garden acre Latibe, Himat Kernavasta Mandagaltina, Hatalia, Bedim, Isatis and Pahavi theatre, to the Himakarla Tibunavasta of the now, one third with Allah current or maker, seven hundred fifty multiply kerning. So they put that Marvin Ekrimin, to take Polikirgata. ආර්ථිකයේ in our commercial sector, does this year have a mulu or the money may massa tuna? Enang, eka tunsi. At a sea tunsi, eka seca sea, eka aragana, the bedella bedu hammer, six point seven thousand. The more profit attributable to ordinary shareholders, once you divide that, it's going to be six point four. It was Ilang eka, uh, without the name bonus eka, bonus eka, the villa, Catherine Harima. If you take this mercury PLC, so let me take that NPLC. So let's again take what is the profit attributable to the shares. Uh, you can see uh, profit for the year it's 20, profit attributable to the NCI 1.4, profit attributable to preference shareholders uh, 2.5. So here you need to be conscious that Mercury classify this uh, preference shares as non-current liabilities. Mercury preference shares classify non-current liabilities with it. In happy that may give a dividend taker, the end of the may profit take a gun good up, may dividend take a consider will at the end. Profit for the year. So the preference shares classify only non-current liabilities with it. Now give a dividend taker. Include Velati in a finance expense, but the finance expense consider Velata Mamita Davilati. In an api, Adukarandone may be saying one point four kiena, non controlling interest taker gear book, Gana Vitra. So therefore, uh, what is the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders? It's going to be eighteen thousand six hundred. The heart I high here. The heart I high here, profit take away. Then let's look at what is the number of shares, number of foreign shares outstanding that was 2 million. Million of the Kaktiba. Ita Matrava, Bagavati Buna. Capitalization of reserves by showing 1 million. 1 million foreign shares issue Kalati Buna. It's got a bonus issue a Kakti Bunot. How would they own a matter? Right? How would they own a matter of bonus issue a Kakti Bunot? Why are the guarantee in name? Time apportion ne kya nahi tan datta vachne? Kisi me dekha vachne? Me one million ne kama nikam add kar gaan ne kai or ni shaasit. Aap ek baalu mein me nai kiye ne kar. Namut karan do ne chala. Number of or ni shaas two plus me tera one million thi na. To aap ek atot me tera three million bene. Three million thamai shaas bene do ne ek atot ko humne two million 
shares plus one million share issue. So therefore, your earning per share is going to be this much. Earning per share higher this much. Take up it. Then, by balance, a mama kiwi maker one mama stava ka issue karat aur udhar me ka consider karan ke liye kiwi aiki. That because bonus issue provides no funds. Yes, yes, exactly correct. Yeah. Yeah, very correct. It's uh, because uh, it provides no funds. So let us, uh, let, let us just uh, look at that and see by taking a practical example. Now, the main question is that Masa Hayaki Mewa ki bonus issue ka kune kiya. Just imagine, right? Now we have find, found the answer, but I'm going to show you a different one, right? So therefore, don't confuse, never confuse, but make you arrive. Right. Then, when I'm well, right, bonus issue is better, some other I'm trying to show you uh, why you should even at any point this bonus issue had been made say for example let's say it is being made after six month time on 1st of April 2020 you made this bonus issue you have issued one share for every two every two shares let's say you issue one same uh, issue if I give a market price, you can see that you can see that market price per share, market price per share, then you can see that bonus issue, sorry, price issue, you can see that market price, you can see that 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 you you uh, you take now for every two shares it's one no okay for these two shares the value is 50 for this one share the value is zero so then divide it by three so this is how we take me but after how many ci see a bit of the name this tonight the summer tonight so this is the theoretical x right price this is my theoretical x right pricing Right. Theoretical x right price a copy. So work out correct. Okay. Right. Now, what is the market price? It is 50. Now, if you work out the adjustment factor, it's like this now. It's this one divided by 50. Right. It comes as 0 0.667 or something. Okay. Right. Now if we apply the same kind of work what we have done to the right issue and if we look at the same and let us see uh, what is the weighted average number of shares api then ara right issue eke karapu vidiyata muda metara karala balamu kohomada weighted average number of shares yanna ena right issue eke karapu vidiyata ma kalachche de patang atha dawasa indala bonus issue eke karapu dawasa wenakam weighted average number of shares balanna ona kalachche de aranbe weighted average number of shares Sorry, number of shares 2 million tibuna. So, with the mass of high, I so take a high in with worth 2 million into 6 divided by 12. So, what the hack in the maker adjustment factor king up he adjust karot divide karot shares gana very winner. A kick does one see up now. Okay, it was say up then yandone. The higher you can see that we see in the lab 31st March 2021. When it comes to the top of the shares, you know, the color change the pattern of million they got the bar, then million a bonus issue. A car I can open a shares million to not a million to land on a picture card at the six month divided by 12. The makeup is a thought it does fancy. Take that one, see, take that one, see, I get to know the other million to know. In a bonus issue, a cup of the million and a bonus issue, a dead tip banan, Kalachi, the Aram, a million, the Kakran tip, a decorative million, a cup of the Kilima to not kill a cup of the Prashna. A get a my, a drum had a key. Right? Any say, Mama, or talk to a bonus issue, a cup of the Bagaman, Mono at Mahitana to a million, eh? At Karagate, number of foreign shasu. Now take a rational liquor. 
ඉතින් අතර මේකෙත් බෝනස් එලිමන්ට් එකක් තියෙනවා ඔයා තියරටිකල් එක්ස් රයිට් ප්‍රයිස් වර්ක් අවුට් කරලා ඇඩ්ජස්ට්මන්ට් ෆැක්ට් එකක් වර්ක් අවුට් කරලා මේ විදිහට ඇප්ලයි කරලා බැලුවත් අවසානයේ ඔයා යන්නේ 3 මිලියන් කියන පොඩ් නම්බර් ඔෆ් ෂෙයර්ස් වලට තමයි. එතකොට අපරාදී එහෙම මහන්සියක් ගන්නේ නැහැ. There's no point of taking that much of effort. So therefore, if you see a bonus issue, just add it. Just add it, right? Okay. Hope it is clear. Make a path there to get it now. Got it? Okay. Now let us move on to the one last thing. It's about the debentures that has been issued by the Jupiter, and it was seven hundred twenty thousand interest expense is given. Uh, the debentures can be converted into three hundred thousand. This is the only thing. And uh, let's see. Tera balamu meka kohmadu veni kiye. So you need to consider as you did earlier. So what are the options that you have? This is about let me take it here. Potential order shares. Then you tala potential order shares. potential ordinary shares so it's about the convertible debentures convertible debentures so if you take this convertible debentures uh, what is the impact that it has uh, it says that it's 720 but the tax applicable so there are for 720000 interest uh, one Minus zero point three, and that's what the amount what you should take, and it's going to be five hundred four thousand. Ne, fancy half a right. One profit take that benefit. Eight take me shares or the kya kya benefit or the, and after the convert no three hundred thousand shares at benefit. Then me then impact the value what come on. Question right one point seven. 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 So uh, uh, let us now take uh, this is what is the company. Uh, this is Jupiter. Jupiter is the first one that we have worked out. Mulimu work out for the company. Jupiter ki tatpe value what? Thirty puna visi thunda ha profit. Hatda ha thirty puna is thunda ha profit take thirty puna. Sorry, is thunda ha profit take one thousand two hundred fifty or nishya asne. Yeah. ोनेसिया earnings On a diluted earning per share, right? It's fifteen point two. So let's say that uh, this had become nineteen. For example, अभी तो मेरे को दाहना में आप कुना किया ना, ये ना अभी diluted diluted earning per share का वार्ता कराने ने मुझे तो दाहना में क्या ने dilution ने काम ने मेरी value लांडी ने diluted earning per share एक बाला ने हम वेला को में dilute तो ना किया ना मेरे को दाहना में आप कहाँ ना अभी एक report कराने ना मुझे पहलवाई दस में देखा Uh, it is yes. Right, right. Yes, this is it. This is this. Yes, it took some time than expected, but uh, thank you very much that uh, you have been to the last moment. So it's really good. And yes, now it's time for you to uh, question. If there's anything that you are not comfortable, not clear, yes, you can question with us. If you have any other thing, then I can help you. Even in a later point in time, you can email me, you can call me, so you can get the 
clarification uh, wherever it is required, right? But just for the moment, if there is anything that you are not uh, quite comfortable, just let me know and I might be able to help you with the clarification. Okay, uh, then it seems fine. Then thank you very much and let us stop the discussion for the day. Uh, okay, then hope you in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.